And good morning. Welcome to Focus on Stafford County on 1590 KVGB and 95.5 FM or once a month visit. You can find out what's going on in Stafford County. And as Do- Dakota Tucker reminded us, before we started today's program, it is St. John Jubilee time in studio with us. Stafford County Economic Development Director Kathleen Norman. Uh, it's St. John Jubilee time already. I know. It's hard to believe. I, it's, it's here. It is. So uh, I guess we'll go ahead and start with that on the program today and maybe uh, uh, what role you guys have with this event. I know there's a lot of volunteers put a lot of work into this to make it a successful event every year. Right. And so our office doesn't have a huge hand in any of it. Um, it's the city does all the heavy lifting. It's their event. Um, so I know they've been working like crazy the past couple months getting everything together. So Friday night, tomorrow, things open. Um, the big things are there's a cornhole tournament. There'll be the vendors set up. Um, there's bounce houses and games. This year it's a little different because there's not a carnival coming. Uh-huh. Um, and then tomorrow night is the street dance with uh, Steel Scarecrow playing. Okay. And then Saturday morning, um, free breakfast by the Odd Fellows. Um, there's a car smash as a benefit um, for Emerson, one of the kids in the county who's fighting cancer. Uh-huh. There's um, more vendors, the booth, um, bounce houses, games. Then we have the parade at 1.30, so that's a big highlight. A lot of class reunions going on. Um, and there's a Pie the Cops fundraiser at 3 p.m. Pie the Cop. Okay, yeah. get down there at 3 o'clock. To, that's on Saturday. Saturday. Okay, yep. okay. So tomorrow evening, all day Saturday, just a good time to get out. Enjoy the vendors, enjoy the bounce houses. There's raffles going on, so you can get tickets to some great prizes. Um, just a great small town fun event um, that's family friendly. Okay, and it gets started uh, coming up tomorrow night. Yep, so 6 p.m.'s opening ceremony, and then stuff really gets started around 9 a.m. on Saturday, but 7 a.m. there's the breakfast. Okay, fantastic. So, St. John Jubilee. And- get. Nope. Information, sorry, around the square Facebook page is where you can get the schedule and all the updated information. Okay, okay, Saint, oh, that's uh, around the square Here. on yep. Facebook. Okay, yep. all right, let's go. All right, uh, we're on events right now, so yeah. let's talk about some events taking place in Stafford, I guess. Right, yeah, so St. John Jubilee this weekend, but the city of Stafford has a number of things that are going on, so... They've started their Munchy Mondays, which is that on the second Monday of the month, they have a number of food trucks that come into town. And so it, they park by the old bowling alley on Main Street, but they always have a different selection. So you can look at their Facebook page to see who's coming. But it's a Munchy nice- Monday. Yep. I like that. Okay. <laughs> but it's a fun opportunity to have something different. I mean, they have Elroy's Pizza and they have Joanne's Cafe as their uh-huh. standard fare, you know, during the week. But Monday Monday munchies, they have, you know, kind of the special thing. So that will happen all throughout the summer, um, second Monday of the month. They also have their library is putting together First Fridays. So they'll have one coming up June 3rd. But um, another one to highlight will be the June 1st car show. So I think they're still looking for people to bring cars in, but it will be a fun time. They also have food trucks at that event. Um, So it's kind of a nice Friday night af- uh, evening activity starting around 6 p.m. Go eat dinner, um, see what they have on display. They have a number of activities also for the children. Um, and so that's something happening there. The Stafford Libraries actually have, has a lot going on right now. They got a um, Heritage Trust Fund grant through the Kansas Historical Society to do some restoration. So they have a really um, beautiful historic building there that was built in 1905 as a memorial library. Um, the Larrabee family did it in, uh, in honor of their daughter, Nora. And so they're doing foundation work, getting everything solidified. They'll be cleaning and restoring all of the glass windows, getting the foyer redone so the front door can function again. So they've put a lot of work in. And um, First Fridays is just another part of the activity of amenities they offer the community. Who's some of the people that are spearheading that over there? It seems like Stafford's really got some stuff going on right now. They do. And I've been helping with one of the committees just for grant administration. Sure, so sure. I'm not going to remember everyone's name. I know 
And so I apologize in advance no, if I, I forget any, but like I know um, Nancy Hildebrand and um, Pam Turner and Shelly Brenzing have been big on the fundraising side of the committee. Uh-huh. I know the former director, Jan, was part of the one who was able to secure the grant funds. Um, they have a library board of a number of people. I can't name all of them, so I'm not going to try, but there are a number of people. So between the city and, you know, people that Stafford really has a lot of things happening. I mean, they have a pickleball league. Um, Oh, wow. They got pickle port pickleball courts put in last year, you know, painted Uh stuff. And so, I mean, they really have some nice amenities, which the last kind of thing, I guess, to highlight too, that they have this summer is they do free movies on Wednesdays. So it's 10 a.m. Um, I think it's most Wednesdays in the month. You can find it on the um, Ritz Theater Facebook page and the City of Stafford page. They make the announcement of what they'll be playing. They'll also have newer releases on some of the weekends. Um, like there's no movies this weekend, but next weekend they're having the new um, Maverick Top Gun. Uh, really? Or, Top Gun Maverick is the movie. Yeah. So that will show in Stafford the 3rd, 4th, and 5th, I believe. So 7.30 on Friday and Saturday and a 3 p.m. matinee. $5 tickets for adults. $5 uh, snack combo. Yeah, it's like... it. It's amazing. Yeah, it's amazing <laughs> what you can get for 10 bucks when you... And, and that's good. They've got they Top have Gun a, Maverick coming in. Yes. So a lot happening there. Um, so great things. And both cities have pools. So, I mean, that always becomes... A yeah. popular way to pass the time in the summer. Yeah, summertime's here. They, that, that's so neat that you can keep those theaters open. I know Larned's had a very successful uh, community theater over there. And uh, let's see, what do they call it? Sunday date night. Okay. You can all get in for 12 bucks, you get food. And yeah, it's a perfect awesome. deal. A yeah. cheap date night. But Makes that's it okay. affordable for families. Cheap's it, not always bad. <laughs> no, no, it's not. But that is that is really neat uh, what's going on in Stafford. Of course, St. John Jubilee taking place this weekend. Uh, Kathleen Norman, Stafford County Economic Development Director, in with us here on Focus on Stafford County. We'll continue with the program right after this. The friendly staff at Stafford County Drug appreciates your patronage. The lobby is open, and they offer a convenient drive-up window. They'll even deliver your prescriptions in Stafford, St. John, and Maxville for free. Stafford County Drug knows the value of a hard-earned dollar and wants to work with you and your doctor to make prescriptions easy. For any questions on switching your prescriptions to your local pharmacy, call pharmacist Chris Davis at 620-377-5633. Stafford County Drug, open Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Inside White's Food Liner, Highway 281, St. John. SJ and Bank of Kansas knows the value of rural Kansas and is committed to all of the communities they serve personal to business banking and more they offer mobile banking options too download their app at sjn bank of kansas and find them online at sjnbank.com serving you since 1905 and with six locations sjn bank of kansas in st john maxville hudson burdett greensburg and lacrosse member fdic at 360 Insurance. As storm season approaches and with prices quickly rising, making sure you have enough coverage on your irrigation systems is very important. At Ag360 Insurance, we have multiple carriers that offer competitive rates and great coverage. We'd appreciate an opportunity to earn your business. Feel free to stop by our office in St. John or give us a call at 620-549-3579. You can also check us out online at ag360insurance.com. You're wondering where to see Top Gun Maverick? Stafford's Theater, the Ritz Theater. The Ritz Theater. So that that's historic in its own right, right? Uh, I mean, it's been around for a while. Yeah. It's not... I don't know. There, when you get on the realm of historic, it, okay. <laughs> it can be a rabbit hole of what qualifies, what doesn't. Sure, I mean, but, but it's been a staple on their Main Street for a long time. Yeah, so that that is tremendous. Uh, Kathleen Norman with us, uh, Stafford County Economic Development Director. Okay, we're going to talk about some issues here that everyone's facing. I know Hoisington going through this right now. Looks like they were going to move forward with a uh, daycare. Uh, that's kind of been put on hold. Uh, so what's going on with the initiatives that everyone knows is important right now? You get people in the workforce. People can't find people to, to go to work. But uh, daycare, what's going on in Stafford County right now? Right. So so last fall, um, the Stafford County Child Care Committee formed as a collaboration between our extension um, the school, the St. John School District Economic Development, and we've had a number of community members involved. And so our goal is to kind of, we did a needs assessment to figure out what is the need 
Um, how can we quantify this? And then how do we look at addressing it? We've, um, Edwards County, our neighbor, um, has seen a lot of success in kind of securing locations that you can rotate providers in. So um, having like ownership of a building or space and then providing kind of the basics in terms of equipment or things needed to operate and then being able to find a provider to independently run their business out of there. Um, so we're seeing that that model would be effective in our county. So we put together a proposal and went to the county commissioners at the beginning of May. They said, approach the cities with your plan and see if they'll commit first. So um, last week uh, we went to St. John City Council. Um, the plan for St. John is to bring in a modular classroom building um, that would allow for two providers to operate one on each side, and that would provide about 18 new slots um, for children needing daycare. So the city has committed 65000 which allows us to secure the building. Um, so we'll be bringing in a used modular unit. The modular unit would get placed and then anchored in. So we still have had additional funds that we'll need to put in the concrete footings, do the skirting, the decks, um, other things that are needed for modification or to meet KDHE requirements. So we'll need hard, hard wire smoke detectors in. We'll need a fenced play area things like that. Um, and so yesterday, um, the county commission in Stafford County has agreed to $55,000 to the child care committee. The goal is that we fully carry out the St. John project that has been proposed. And then um, we'd like to keep moving and do stuff. Um, we did approach Maxville City Council um, for a plan for their community and haven't had um, traction yet there, but we're going to keep working um, we also have been talking and working with um, options for Stafford. So right now the big thing is the funding has come through for the St. John location. Um, we'll keep going. I mean, some of the key kind of things are just like we know there's a need for like 70 to 100 daycare spots. Um, because you had that. You had we did the survey. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, the goal is you don't want to overflood the market. And our goal is to support our existing licensed providers um, Child Care Aware of Kansas has a lot of great resources available. They're providing some sustainability grants to existing providers. They have startup funds for people wanting to get into providing daycare. The biggest challenge our county has faced is like locations. People either don't or can't provide out of their home um, or where they live, and so there needs to be a different location. And so that's where we're looking at how can we set up some of these. That would create more of a sustainable thing. If we, if, um, you know, there's ownership of the building and some of the key assets for being able to be a provider, it would be easier to find people when people decide not to provide anymore. So it provides more stability. Okay. And I know that I, I, this is probably a question that you had, so I don't have a problem because that's some of the pushback that we've seen in different communities, especially over in Hoisington, pushback from, uh, in-home daycare providers. How did you address that concern uh, in Stafford County? I mean, the biggest thing right now, I would say, is there's such a demand. There's a demand for like 50 spots right now in St. John. So it, we only have two licensed providers in St. John. So, I mean, it, I live next <laughs> to one of them and she's like, she's like, I want to be able to direct people to go somewhere else. I mean, you know, right now there's such a crisis or need uh -huh. because we don't have enough providers. Um, and so our goal, though, is to support where we can our existing because we don't we don't want to lose, you know, the ones mm -hmm. we have. Um, I think, too, it becomes complicated in terms of when you start looking at um, center. I don't know. You get into so. So centers are a thing. We've seen a number of communities move towards a center model, which would have kind of like multiple classrooms for different age ranges. There's more, it's, there's usually more startup costs and there's question about like fit, making sure you can sustain it because if you build a more expensive building, does it work? Some, if you get up into higher numbers, if you're really providing for closer to like, you know, 70 to 100 kids, you could have less staff than having kind of the in-home cares because of how they do the ratios there. Uh -huh. 
But where we are looking at some of the needs, you're not really going to reduce the amount of staff needed if you're looking at, you know, 40 to 50 slots by having independent daycare businesses versus trying to do a center. And so, again, we're looking at how do you reduce the barrier to entry for people interested and willing to, you know, do child care and then keep the sustainability of having those locations available to be able to rotate in and out providers as people decide, you know, to stop offering. Sometimes people just want to provide child care while they have young kids um, at home and then want to do something else later. Mm -hmm. Um, You have other people who will do it for kind of like their whole career, you know, or right. for extended time. So I think that's part of providing the stability of having those locations available. Um, we have had interest in people wanting to provide, but again, not necessarily out of their homes. So it seems like at least it's off, off and running a little bit here. So, so that's far, positive. Yeah. yeah. So, so far it is. We, we, again, aren't fully facing pushback we're trying to communicate with our existing providers. Stafford, like that town, is in a better spot. Um, they have three licensed providers already. From the survey, it looks like they could easily support another daycare. It's like we wouldn't want to be trying to put in, you know, like three more daycares there, like because we can't show the need. I mean, eventually, if you see changes in population and there becomes more like longer wait lists, you might look at doing more, but. Again, it's really to support our existing, but we know we need more slots. That survey really certainly helps out back up. It does. Backing up the data that that shows the need. And being able to quantify, because like one of the things that came out of the survey is 40% of the need is for infants, so children under 18 months. And so looking at that, looking at more having these group home daycare models would allow potentially for more infant spots than if we tried to go like a center route. Um, because for cash flowing the center, you're very limited. You can have one, you have to have one teacher towards three infants in a center. And so if you could have multiple in-home cares, they could choose to take one, one to two, depending on Mm -hmm. how they're running their business. Um, so the potential is there for more spots by doing this model too, which is where we know the greatest need is. Okay. So the, yeah, it's positive news coming out of there. It is. On, and uh, so again, it's kind of it's kind of a silly question, maybe, but to just kind of review for people: what's pr- problems does providing quality daycare solve in a community or a county? So we had Child Care Aware of Kansas come to our commission meeting yesterday, and they said essentially, like if we could meet the daycare needs, we would see basically over a million dollars put into our local economy from people having. So currently there's people not in the workforce who could be in the workforce. Um, Some of that then affects the ability to purchase other additional services within the county. Um, So that's a huge thing. I mean, like the economic impact. And child care is the industry needed to support all industries. What we see just generally speaking is a lot of younger families have to be two people working. Um, Just oftentimes either because of student debt or other factors. I mean, wages in a lot of ways in our area haven't kept up with the cost of increase in housing. Like new construction is super expensive. Um, You know, our cost of groceries isn't, you know, kind of is the same regardless of where you are in the state of Kansas. I mean, if you go, you know, to the coast, they have more expensive groceries. So, you know, people talk about our cost of living being lower here, and there there are things, but primarily our cost of housing has been lower, but that's looking at, we have a lot of older houses, you know, mm-hmm. and housing also is an issue. So I think looking at what what can people afford, it's like oftentimes you need two people working and they need child care in order to pay the bills and, you know, live and work in our area. Yeah, that's crazy. I heard uh, inflation called the runaway tax earlier today. That's a pretty good way to put it. Okay, Kathleen Norman, great uh, segment there on child care and what's going on in Stafford County. And, of course, that's what all uh, counties and communities are looking at right now, again, to get people back in the workforce. We'll take a break. More, more coming up here 
on KVG. Calling all businesses, large or small, see the experts at Astra Business Solutions for your account receivable billing, financing, and management needs. They'll do your customer billing, freeing your valuable time and energy to manage and grow your business. Astra Business Solutions provides immediate financing of your receivables, providing the cash to pay bills or expand your business. See the experts in billing, collecting, and management of receivables. Contact Mel Waite and his staff for a no-obligation consultation. Astra Business Solutions, 105 North Main in Ellenwood, and online at www.astrabusinesssolutions.com. Hey everyone, Trey Bergen here with Ag360 Insurance. As storm season approaches and with prices quickly rising, making sure you have enough coverage on your irrigation systems is very important. At Ag360 Insurance, we have multiple carriers that offer competitive rates and great coverage. We'd appreciate an opportunity to earn your business. Feel free to stop by our office in St. John or give us a call at 620-549-3579. You can also check us out online at ag360insurance.com. The St. John Jubilee begins Friday afternoon, May 27th through Saturday, May 28th in downtown St. John. It's going to be a weekend full of fun. Enjoy the different vendors, bounce houses, and games, beer garden, street dance featuring Steel Scarecrow, Cornhole Tournament, Parade, 5K Run Walk, Prize Drawings, Pie the Cops, and more. Come see for yourself. And a full schedule can be found by visiting the Around the Square St. John, Kansas Facebook page. Rain or shine, we'll see you at the 2022 St. John Jubilee in downtown St. John. The friendly staff at Stafford County Drug appreciates your patronage. The lobby is open, and they offer a convenient drive-up window. They'll even deliver your prescriptions in Stafford, St. John, and Maxville for free. Stafford County Drug knows the value of a hard-earned dollar and wants to work with you and your doctor to make prescriptions easy. For any questions on switching your prescriptions to your local pharmacy, call pharmacist Chris Davis at 620-377-5633. Stafford County Drug, open Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Inside White's Food Liner, Highway 281, St. John. SJN Bank of Kansas knows the value of rural Kansas and is committed to all of the communities they serve. Personal to business banking and more. They offer mobile banking options too. Download their app at SJN Bank of Kansas and find them online at sjnbank.com. Serving you since 1905 and with six locations. SJN Bank of Kansas in St. John, Maxville, Hudson, Burdett, Greensburg, and La Crosse. Member FDIC. Back on Focus on Stafford County today, great discussion with Kathleen Norman, Stafford County Economic Development Director. Spent quite a bit of time there on child care, the initiative taking place in Stafford County. So give us the latest housing update. What do you have, care, right. Kathleen? So um, the three houses in Stafford are nearing completion. Someone will start moving in tomorrow to one of them. Um, within the next week or two, we'll see the other occupancy and the, other, the third house is lined up for a July 1 move-in. So... Um, we're going to see a lot more progress than happening on the three um, that are going up in St. John. Uh, Maxville's been surveyed, and so there's a little bit more work to do there before stuff will start. But, I mean, I think we're looking at the end of the year. We'll wrap up this project. We've been working on kind of a strategy for going after additional funding. Yesterday, the county commission allocated $350,000 um, for us to go after another grant. We'll be going to the cities in the coming weeks um, asking for their support. So is this a matching okay. grant is where the... It is and it, it's not. So to be competitive and to be able to carry out how the the official RFP is not out, but what we've seen in the webinars, mm -hmm. um, we have to have the local funds to truly be able to, to do it. Um, and so... That's what this commitment is. If we didn't have it, then we wouldn't be competitive. Well, obviously, there's so. uh, support out there for it, and people are seeing these, you know, starting out and yep. what has been done so far. That's got to make it a lot uh, easier to do. So It uh, does, and I think we've, we'll be putting out more information, and next month we'll definitely start talking about the state of our current housing stock. Um, but we've done a lot to kind of show the need, quantify things, show what's affordable, um, but also give flexibility taking in feedback we've received from the commissioners and other um, county residents. Okay. Uh, anything new at the Port Authority right now? So, I mean, the Port Authority is moving well. Um, we received $2.5 million more dollars um, through an appropriations in the omnibus budget. Um, so this is in addition to the announcement yes. we had last month. So last we month. have a total wow. of five more Five million coming there. We have a, the two point five kind of local through our TIF and um, debt financing. We're we're looking to close that 
additional $2.5 million gap, but have some good avenues for it. I mean, gearing up for grant writing. I mean, we have a number of grants and stuff that um, be heavy hitting this coming month. So, so always it, a lot going on. Well, it's, <laughs> well, I know that's good, but uh, what's what's that total that you're looking at getting to? So right or? now we're looking at the $10 million. So we have about the seven point five. Um, wow. So just the two point five kind of gap, and um, you get to ten, and then we're gonna start seeing some stuff happen. Then, we'll wait, yeah, we'll I mean, stuff's wait. gonna already start being happening. Yeah. things are gonna be moving. Um, we'll be seeing some of that money. The about two point five, we'll be seeing actually in our account, and well, the port will be seeing it in their accounts in like the next month. So, wow. things are good. Things are moving. Um, but it becomes challenging for me to know when I can schedule a vacation. <laughs> 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 no vacation. No vacation. Oh, Kathleen, thanks so much. Have fun at Jubilee this weekend. Thank you. Thanks, Steve. Okay, that is Focus on Stafford County here on 1590 KVGB and 95.5 FM.